Welcome back to the story of Liberty. This is John Bona. Well, I'm very excited to tell you the Liberty book is now completed after two years of work. It's available nationwide at the story of Liberty Press.com. We hope you read the Liberty book. If you get a copy, you're probably concerned about Liberty like me. It could be that you or a family member or a friend served in the military. Or for personal reasons, you've just been thinking about liberty. Or maybe you've just grown more concerned about the government chipping away at our personal freedoms. While there's many books out there cataloging the government abuses, the Liberty Book is the only one that digs to the root of the problem. We are searching the foundations from Scripture for liberty, what they are, and how to return to them. The Liberty Book takes us on a different path, not a path you've ever been on before, to discover the true nature of some of our most sacred principles of liberty. You know, there's endless opinions about the importance of liberty today. There's plenty of discussions about the loss of freedoms. You probably know a guy who has a room filled with rifles, you know, just in case. Or others are setting up a hideaway in a foreign country as insurance against a government becoming tyrannical and growing too aggressive. But this book, the Liberty Book, is not advocating this. It's not a call to arms. It's a call to begin thinking and acting in the way God has instructed with respect to our freedoms. It's a distinctively Christian look at what liberty is and how we can pursue it. By the way, we're very strong supporters of our Second Amendment rights. We are asserting that liberty is only derived from God at its foundation and that it is only through Christ that true liberty is achievable. It doesn't come from the government, nor in the final end can it be taken away by the government. Many assume their freedom is a privilege, not a right, and have never really considered the question in these terms before. Most people believe liberty is a gift from civil government and should be controlled by that authority. And many civil government officials are happy to agree with this, treating our liberty as loose, fungible. Most elected representatives are slow to help us against these abuses that keep on accumulating. They agree that liberty comes from the government and could be eliminated by their own authority. But see, the very people appointed to protect our freedom, they violate our trust and the covenant that binds us. When those who hold office no longer serve the people, but oppress the people, they violate both testaments of the Bible and our founding documents. They contend with God. It is only Christianity that brings liberty to the world. As shown on that beautiful forefathers monument in Plymouth, Massachusetts, rising from that quiet glade stands its central figure, faith, pointing to heaven and holding a Bible. 81 feet high, directing the visitor's eye toward the heavens. Underneath are the symbols morality, law, and education. Additionally resides Liberty, who we have called the Liberty Man. You may have heard of him. While making the film Monumental with Kirk Cameron, we sat down for many hours and talked and discussed this Liberty Man. The idea of the Liberty Man derives the first usage as a seaman, a man of the sea who has gone ashore. You've probably heard that term. After months of being ruled by the strict laws of the ship, he at last leaves behind the virtual enslavement to a much broader freedom. He has a liberty, less profound than represented by our Liberty Man, carved in stone, but we get a glimpse of this man who has the call of the sea. Our liberty man is found in the earliest records 
from God and people. The slave being dragged and crushed by first by his own nature and then by the actions of others, he finds himself ever working to rise, but forever failing. The liberty man, under siege from the same forces, manages to find victory, a freedom that his soul craves. This is the battle of the centuries. Will we be slaves or will we be free people? What is it that unchains slaves? What is it that makes free people free? What is it that began emancipating the West while surrounding cultures remain captive, being led like a herd of cattle? The Liberty Man has been represented by numerous men and women throughout the centuries. He is any person who chooses to resist the powers of slavery. Oftentimes, the Liberty Man works against oppression by seeking justice in the court or on the battlefield. Or he may use financial means to raise up the widow or the orphan, giving hope for a more prosperous life. These kinds of works have been commanded by Christ and are the backbone of Christianity. Liberty men protecting their neighbors are doing the work that pushes back slavery in tangible ways. If nothing tangible is done, then the whole Christian enterprise is reduced to a vain philosophy, allowing humanity to remain in chains. See, the assurance that liberty is a worthy goal comes not from emotion, but from revelation. It comes from the very word of God, who speaks eternally through his perfect law of liberty. His word leads to liberty even though people often disagree with it, which is the difference between the humanist and the Christian. See, the humanist offers no compelling moral basis for liberty. He may desire liberty for all, but he just might as well desire slavery for everybody because his opinions aren't based on anything other than his own emotion. However, the Christian speaks and acts out of the supernatural word of God in order to defend liberty. Christians are motivated by God's word to believe that freedom is possible for all.